It's an animal you've probably never heard of, but it may be at the center of the coronavirus crisis. It's called a pangolin. Now, researchers in China confirmed this animal carries a form of the virus that looks strikingly similar to the disease that's sweeping the world. Here's investigative reporter Candace Wynn. In the search for the source of COVID-19 and how it traveled from animals to humans, scientists have been exploring food markets, bats, science labs, and now the plight of the pangolin and how it may have affected us all. The pangolin is a scaly mammal that hunts for ants and termites in sub-Saharan Africa and parts of Asia. While it may appear to be an unlikely link in the chain of the coronavirus infection, Chinese researchers discovered the virus in a sick pangolin was a close cousin to the virus that causes COVID-19 in humans. Some genes were a perfect match, and the spike protein used in the virus to enter a cell was nearly identical. So how could the virus move from a solitary bug hunter to humans? In January, an elderly man died in Wuhan, China after suffering from what appeared to be flu symptoms. Suspicion grew around the live animal section of a market he visited regularly where bats are sold. Bats live with a lot of viruses that are just in their body for a long time and don't bother them. Dr. Julia Shaletsky, a UC Berkeley biochemist, says viruses can mutate inside the bat and then infect humans through contact or a bite, like with rabies. But what really happened with patients, patient one is difficult to say. Lab tests showed the coronavirus in those locally sold bats was different from the human version. So scientists started looking for another animal that could have changed the virus before infecting humans. Attention shifted to a massive underground smuggling operation. Pangolins are the most illegally trafficked mammals in the world. More than tigers, more than elephants, more than rhinos, anything. Paul Thompson is the director of conservation programs at the Wildlife Conservation Network. He says the world market for pangolins has skyrocketed in the last five years, even reaching some American ports. We're going to contact the Center for Disease mm -hmm. Control and give them oversight of the shipment. Last month, the United Nations announced seizures of illegally sold pangolins have risen from 14,000 per year in 2014 to 142,000 animals in 2018. The number of pangolins actually killed each year from illegal trade is estimated to be in the millions. They are in high demand in places like Asia for their meat and for their scales. Pangolin scales were used in Chinese medicine uh, for over a thousand years. Eastern medicine uses the scales to treat a variety of ailments. But Li Xing Huang, president of the American College of Traditional Chinese Medicine in San Francisco, says the thousand year old tradition needs to stop. As the world is changing, traditional medicines or the way how traditional medicines are practiced have to change. Since the outbreak, the Chinese government banned eating wild animals, an important step, says Huang, in preventing the spread of diseases. However, wildlife can still be used for healing. We could give up this old tradition. It's a wake-up call. But the big problem, says Thompson, is a global crime network that traffics wildlife, and with it, deadly viruses. Some of the biggest, most damaging or high-risk diseases we've seen all stem from wild animals and either the trade or consumption of wild animals. We saw it with SARS, with Ebola, with MERS, and now we're seeing it with COVID-19. So this entire thing could have been prevented if we weren't consuming animals like pangolins. Scientists are still searching for the true source of COVID-19. They're looking at pangolins and the horseshoe bat. There is little doubt, though, that the illegal trade of wild animals plays a role in the transporting of infectious diseases around the world. Candace Wen, NBC Bay Area News.